Even though the Dodge Challenger is the oldest muscle car on sale in America at this point in time, it's actually the second best selling muscle car in the US and it really is not that far behind the Mustang in terms of overall sales. One of the reasons for that is the absolutely insane engine options that you can get in your Challenger. You can get this from around 300 horsepower all the way on up to basically 800 horsepower if you want to. The one thing you can't get anymore though is the Dodge Demon, which was the 840 horsepower version of the Challenger that was absolutely insane. FCA tells us that the reason for that was that they'd always intended that particular model to be a limited edition vehicle. So instead of giving us a Demon, they're now giving us a Hellcat Red Eye. And yes, this is basically just another engine option under the hood of the Challenger. The same basic vehicle has not changed. The Dodge Demon gave you 808 horsepower when running on 91 octane fuel or 840 horsepower when running on 100 octane race gasoline under specific circumstances. This vehicle will give you 797 horsepower on 91 octane basically all day long. Dodge tells us that the difference between the Demon and this running on 91 octane is mainly to do with the air intake. So otherwise it is basically the same engine under the hood. So let's dive under the hood. Let's talk about what is a little bit different than the Red Eye and let's take it for a drive. This video will be a lot shorter than our normal video. Under this hood, we find four different Hemi engines. So if you love Hemis, this is definitely the car to shop for. We have a 5.7 liter Hemi, a 6.4 liter Hemi, and then two 6.2 liter supercharged Hemis. This is the most powerful. They're still calling this the Hellcat. It's the Hellcat Red Eye. So that's why we have the little Hell Kitten logo right there on the top of the engine. In order to increase power from 707 horsepower up to 797 horsepower, we have a different supercharger on top. The supercharger increases boost up to 14.5 PSI. That's notably higher than the regular Hellcat and very, very high for a large displacement engine like this. In addition to that, we have strengthened internals in order to help handle all that power, improved lubrication so that we can handle all that power and not blow itself apart, and a three source air intake. So air comes in via the functional hood scoops on the hood, comes out right there, comes in via this cutout right there instead of one of the center lamps in the front bumper and L ends up right there in that air box. Speaking of air, we also have a power chiller for the intake air. That was one of the interesting tweaks we got on the Demon. Basically, the vehicle will run the air conditioning system and use the air conditioning coolant to cool the intake charge air to help reduce engine temperatures. In addition to that, the heavy duty eight speed automatic transmission gets an even beefier torque converter. We get an entirely different drive shaft and strengthened internals all the way to the rear. Apart from the engine changes and a red-eyed cat that shows up in the instrument cluster when you turn on the car, the other changes you'll notice will be right here in the infotainment system. If we move to the SRT option under the Uconnect system, then you'll notice we have a power option right there for 797 horsepower or 500 horsepower. You can set up your custom modes right up here at top. So if you choose this custom mode button, for instance, we can adjust to say whether you want 500 horsepower, uh, street or sport. Those are dependent on the power level, of course. You can do track, sport, street, etc. Paddle shifters on and off, traction, suspension, steering, etc. It allows you a great deal of customization there. We also have this race option right here, which is kind of interesting. You can adjust the launch control RPM, so you can actually slide this toggle up and down to adjust how fast the engine is spinning when you activate launch control. We also have some shift lights right here. You can turn them on, turn them off. There's a race cool down option where when you turn off the engine, it will keep the engine fan running to try and cool down the incoming air coolant temperature. This helps reduce heat soak when you're drag racing. There's also a line lock option right there. You can activate the line lock and that helps you do burnouts or warm up your rear tires if you want to do that. There's a valet mode. If you want the valet to not have all of the performance of the vehicle, you can enter that and then deactivate it when you get back to your car. We've seen the performance pages before. Those make a return in this generation. We have trans temperature, air fuel ratio mix, boost pressure, etc. Incoming air coolant temperature, oil pressure, all the extra gauges that you don't normally get in a modern car. So you can really monitor them if you're taking your vehicle out drag racing. If you'd like to see the history of a particular option, you can press that little expand button and you actually get a running graph of that particular option. That's really handy if you want to really monitor things like that incoming air coolant temperature, or the transmission temperature or oil temperature, et cetera, as you're racing the vehicle. If we click on over to the home button, we get some extra widgets there that we can add and remove, power, G-force, et cetera, lap timers. There are engine option screens where you can see the amount of power and torque, boost pressure, et cetera. And then there's even a dyno option right there. 
Getting to those pages is pretty easy. We have a direct access SRT button right here in the center console, and Dodge makes it really easy to launch the car. We have a simple one press button for the launch control. Much like the regular Hellcat, you can definitely hear all of that supercharger noise from under the hood. Some of you might like it, some of you might not, but it is definitely the key to getting this kind of power in a modern vehicle. But more than this power level, it's also the key to getting this kind of direct linear performance. Because if you drive a McLaren 720, it is definitely fast and it will have absolutely blistering quarter miles, but it also has turbo lag. In the same vein, we see exactly the same thing to a lesser extent in the BMW M5 and basically every other high performance turbocharged vehicle. But a supercharged vehicle like this can be loafing around 1500 RPM, you floor it, and all that power is absolutely instant. There is absolutely no waiting for a turbocharger to spin up. Superchargers, generally speaking, are less efficient than turbochargers, but because they're directly run by the engine, they're always producing some level of boost, and that boost scales as the engine revs up, because there's no delay between the supercharger spinning up and the engine spinning up. The model we're driving again is the wide body trim, so it has those 305 width tires, and the rear end of this vehicle is extremely lively under full throttle acceleration. Although it's possible to get the red eye with the 275 width tire package, I would not recommend it. I would definitely get the 305s that are on this particular model because this is already a little squirrely if you dig a little bit too deep on the accelerator and that model with the narrower tires would be even squirrelier. That's one of the reasons that Dodge allows us to have that horsepower selection. So you can go from 797 horsepower down to 505 horsepower. And if you do that, then it becomes definitely a little bit more mild mannered. Of course, 500 horsepower in a vehicle is not exactly mild mannered, but you can floor it without getting the rear end to step out on you in straight line travel. And if you were to switch it over to 797 horsepower with this quick flick of this button right here in the dashboard, then it definitely can get livelier. One of the things that I've always loved about the Challenger and the Hellcat as well, is that as far as the American muscle cars go, this is the one with the best and most comfortable ride because I can put this into its street suspension mode and things calm down even in this nearly 800 horsepower model. We also have a real back seat in this vehicle. You can actually put two adults back there in relative comfort and there's even a fifth seat belt if you have a family of five that you need to take out occasionally and you want to do so in 800 horsepower. Now if you don't need the back seat then Dodge will delete the back seat for you. But if you are thinking about doing that, then I would suggest definitely going with the factory rear seat delete, especially if you live in a state like California. The reason for that is that if you are in an area that has three person carpool lanes, as happens in California and some other states, but you have a two passenger vehicle, then you can legally drive with two people in that three person carpool lane. And the only way to make that happen in a Challenger is for the factory delete to be done because then your door sticker will say a two passenger capacity, not five passengers. And if you get pulled over, you will be just fine. However, if you delete the rear seats yourself, your door sticker still says five passenger and you won't get out of that ticket. Where the Challenger is a little bit less exciting versus some of the high horsepower competition is out on narrower winding roads like this because this is where the Dodge Challenger really starts to feel like a big vehicle. Now the Challenger still handles well, but it doesn't handle as well as some of those alternatives. Some of that's down to feel, some of it is absolute grip as well, even though the model that we're driving has those really wide tires. On the flip side, of course, this is the kind of vehicle that you could more easily take on long highway journeys because other performance cars with ultra stiff suspensions can be very tiring to drive on long distances. And this really isn't, especially if you actually force the vehicle to upshift and get those revs down so that way the cabin is a little bit quieter. In a vehicle that could empty its fuel tank in about 11 minutes, fuel economy is obviously not going to be very high. We've been averaging around 11 miles per gallon. I think if, if you are concerned about fuel economy, then you should get some of the other flavors of Challenger. Some of them can be quite efficient. And I would actually say that I personally think that the sweet spot for the Challenger is the 6.4 liter V8 version of the SRT trim. That's because we get a lot of the SRT goodies that we find in this model. We get the extra SRT screens, we get the adaptive suspension, and we get 475 horsepower, which is an awful lot of fun, but not quite as death defying as having 797 horsepower. So I think that that would be a little bit safer with me driving because I might kill myself in something like this. It's just a little bit too much fun at times. Bottom line, the Hellcat Red Eye is obviously a hoot and a half. 
Is it that much more fun than a Hellcat wide body? That's difficult to say. In my personal opinion, it's actually difficult to tell the difference between the two out on the road. 700 horsepower is already an enormous amount of horsepower and adding an extra 90 horsepower to it when it's difficult to apply it in the rear doesn't make those legal acceleration maneuvers feel that much more exciting. Going from zero to 60 or zero to 65 or 70 at highway speeds, there's not too, too much difference between this and the regular Hellcat. A lot of the difference seems to be up at those higher speeds, the higher maximum speed, the faster trap times that you'll get in quarter mile runs, etc. Those are going to be where you're going to notice the difference between this model and the lesser Hellcat. So if you're looking at a vehicle like this and you don't plan on ever tracking it or ever taking it to the drag strip, then you might be a little bit better off with something like the regular Hellcat widebody. Unless, of course, you need the ultimate bragging rights of the 797 horsepower vehicle, in which case you might as well get one of these. But because this isn't a demon, it doesn't come standard with the wide body kit that we see here. These are basically fender flares that are tacked onto the body in order to be able to accommodate some seriously wide tires. We have optional 305 width tires. The standard Hellcat makes do with 275s, and even the standard Red Eye makes do with 275s as well. If you want this wide body option, it's $6,000 extra, but it will give you greatly improved handling and actually better acceleration as well, because this is still a rear wheel drive vehicle. If you check all the right option boxes, FCA claims that a 10.8 second quarter mile at 131 miles per hour is possible in this model. And if you were to get the model with the 275 width tires, that would stretch out your quarter mile by three tenths of a second. If you're looking to park one of these bad kitties in your driveway, you'll have to spend $61,795 for the Hellcat and then add the red eye package on top for $11,000. Now that may sound like a lot of cash at first, but I have to say that based on all the components that have been upgraded, it would cost you a great deal more to do that work yourself aftermarket. Then if you want what we're looking at here, which is the wide body version, you'd have to add another $6,000 and then of course a $1,700 gas guzzler tax. As tested, this particular model came in at right around $90,000, but you can have most of the goodies, including the wide body pack, etc., for about $79,440. As with the Demon and honestly the regular Hellcat, the Red Eye is a predator with no natural competition because there is quite simply no other American muscle car out there or pony car with this kind of insanity going on. You can get some pretty powerful Camaros, some pretty powerful Mustangs, but they don't have the same kind of personality that we find in this vehicle and none of them will give you 797 horsepower. 797 horsepower puts this vehicle in an incredibly rare category. If you want this kind of power, you won't even find it in a McLaren 720. It'll actually have about 60 horsepower less than the model that we're driving right here. Now, if you just want to go fast zero to 60, there are vehicles that are faster zero to 60 than this particular model. At around 3.2 seconds to 3.4 seconds, according to the manufacturer, you will definitely go faster zero to 60 in something like a BMW M5. But that's not what the Hellcat and the Hellcat Red Eye are about. These, especially the wide body models, are all about drag strip times because these will definitely flat out beat the BMW M5 on a drag strip every day. By the time you get to the quarter mile, 797 horsepower makes a huge difference in terms of the overall time. And just about everything about the vehicle is really set up for that drag experience. The active chiller system that we have under the hood, the way those air intakes work, the software to help you pre-cool your engine, cool it down between drag runs, etc. Everything really is that off the shelf drag car. So if that's what you're looking for, definitely get one of these puppies. Or if you're simply looking for the bragging rights of having 797 horsepower for a relatively affordable price tag, break out $80,000 and get one of these at your local Dodge dealer today. Let me know what you think about that down there in the comment section below. As always, head over to facebook.com slash alexandautos and see what we're driving this week. I'll see you later.